Alright, welcome back again to our video lesson on chapter 1. So now let's talk about the codes and standards. Okay, so codes and standards, they actually, uh, they must be followed in every engineering practice. Okay, so uh, if we deal with construction, building construction or building designs, then certain codes and standards must be followed. So first, let's define the difference between codes and standards. So when we say codes, it's actually referring to, uh, or let's say it's a mandated by the government for the safety of the public. Okay, whereas standards, it's actually, uh, let's say, developed uh, developed by organizations or okay, organizations, that's organizations for uh, let's say consensus or consensus or compatibility concerns compatibility concerns okay so example in the manufacturing industry so you say standards then it just means that if you follow the same standards then there's gonna be an inter um, compatibility or interchangeability of parts okay so this is, this is the, the goal of standards, but for codes, we say mandated by the government for the safety of the public. Okay, so of course, uh, codes includes a lot of standards. So some standards or far standards are adopted by the codes, and then the government uh, mandates that to be followed for the safety of the public. Okay, so some codes that we have related to uh, let's say building construction or structural design are the following we have the NSCP the National uh, let's say the National Structural Code of the Philippines and the latest version is 2015 we also have the um, National Building Code of the Philippines and since building buildings uh, includes or encompasses not just the strength then of course let's say the electrical aspects or the mechanical aspects then also other codes such as the philippine electrical code or uh, i don't know if it's philippine mechanical code or mechanical code of the philippines philippine mechanical code yes and also the the plumbing code of the Philippines okay I don't know if this is correct plumbing code of the Philippines okay okay so there's really a lot of codes that governs the building uh, building industry okay so for the standards we'll be using our Philippine agricultural engineering standards although uh, this is term standards. There's actually in the uh, RA10915 that talks about the code of, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, that's the code of technical specifications. Specifications. So this is like our code for the agricultural and biosystems engineering. Okay, so just have to check that out but for now we'll just use it as it is I mean the name is uh, Philippine Agriculture Engineering Standards okay another one that we'll use is the uh, Asabe standards okay so uh, uh, Asabe is the American Society Mer 
American Society of Agricultural and Biological Engineers. Okay, so take note this letter B right here corresponds to the biological, it's not biosystems. Okay, so there are a lot of details that's not yet present in uh, in an APIS or let's say in the National Structural Code of the Philippines, like for example the loadings of uh, livestock housing. So there's not much details on that, but the, um, the SAB standards have provided values and on those types of buildings okay so now let's move on to our next topic which is the types of structures so for the types of structures we have actually a simple frame So that, that's rafter, rafter types, and then we have a truss roof. Although this can also be uh, a separate, a separate type. Okay, truss roof, and then portal frames, then hoop structures. Okay, so simple frames. They're just actually. Uh, com consist of let's say columns and a rafter so instead of a truss the design is it uses a rafter okay so the rafter that's where the pervins are uh, are rest on okay so it's the pervins for example and then you have the roofing sheet okay so it's just a simple simple frame structures okay another um, for the truss roof it's also uh, consists of columns but instead of rafters it's actually a truss a roof truss okay. okay so the um, these simple frames, uh, rafter types, and truss roof, uh, they're actually for a uh, shorter span. Although this truss roof, uh, there's another one that I didn't mention is the lattice structure. Okay, so the lattice structure, they're actually, again, uh, can be used for a much larger span so when you say span it's actually the the distance from this point to this point okay so uh, next is the portal frame so portal frames basically it's like a simple frame with rafters except that its design is it has a strengthened knee joint then uh, strengthened apex joint so in that way it's actually more efficient and can have uh, or it can accommodate a longer spans okay and then the hoop structure is basically it's just a curved uh, structural member so let's say an arc so that's hoops so the arcs can be semicircles or other types of arcs Okay, so for the lattice structure that I've mentioned, but I did not include it here, the lattice structure is, let's say, it can be something like designed like a portal frame, except that uh, instead of solid, solid rafters and columns, it is actually a trusses. Okay, so that's lattice structures. Okay, so the advantage of having this actually the advantage of trusses is that you can have you can achieve a longer span with respect to to the weight okay so because since you you only have web members 
then it means that you have a reduced weight as compared to beams I mean or solid ones like this for example the bottom frames so uh, in summary if you say simple frames then that's usually for short span part of frames let's say um, uh, let's say longer span but if you need much longer span which I think uh, may not be common already in agricultural uh, applications then uh, anyways that's the lattice structures Okay, and then another one is the hoop structures. So for our, our simple frames, we have rafters, if it's just a, something like a beam, or we have also truss roof. So the design of roof truss that can vary. So in our lecture handouts, we also have uh, different types of um, roof trusses design. Okay, so now we'll move on to the nomenclature of the uh, building components. Okay, so we'll draw a portal frame. Okay, so the distance from this point, from this space to this, that's what we call uh, B. Oh no, sorry, span. And the distance from this portal frame to the adjacent portal frame, that's what we call the B or, or bay width. Okay, uh, in some nomenclatures, uh, it says clear span or center to center to center spacing, but when it, when it says um, clear span, it's basically, for example, this is uh, the the column. Okay, and then this is our pedestal, for example. So sometimes the the reference point is the center line so if it's the center line then it can also be uh, said as a sp span or center to center span then the clear span would just correspond to this clear uh, to this clear distance clear span okay and then from the floor line we have let's say this is a floor line FFL so finish floor line or let's say floor line then that's from the floor line up to this point that's what we call the eave or eave height that's eave height so meaning that this this point right here this, this is the eave and then the highest point would be the uh, apex or let's say or reach, I think that's uh, also reach. So this is the eave. Okay, so what else? So in a portal frame, there's also beams connecting or connecting this portal frame to the adjacent portal frame, and this is referred to as uh, eaves beam. Okay, and then the structural member that connects these portal frames uh, or where the roofing sheet is attached, then that's what we call the purlins. Now, for the sides, we have also something like a purlin, but the 
the term here is girt or side rails okay what else uh, we also have cross bracings okay and also another cross bracings on this point and we term this as uh, vertical bracings and also here we have um, cross bracings or let's say roof cross bracings sorry roof cross bracings okay so that's for our portal frame for the simple frame so we have a single span or we can also have double span okay so if you want to have uh, center aisles so this is the let's say the center or width of center aisles so that's center aisles so the span will be like this or depending upon the design okay so the distance um, from this point to this point that's what we call the overhang overhang distance overhang distance so it's provided because uh, in agricultural buildings um, sh shades and protection from rains are necessary of course even in human dwellings in residential housings they, they are out they are also present okay so what else so sometimes there's included a, uh, a brace here so the brace is uh, term angle bracing okay, angle bracing okay so what else uh, by the way um, before i forget we also have the base plate so if you try to zoom this in what we see is that example this is the columns and then the columns is actually welded to a plate it's a thick plate and then this thick plate rests on a um, concrete column but sometimes it doesn't have reinforcement so it's just a pedestal okay so pedestal Okay, so this plate is what we call as um, bearing plates or base plates okay, bearing plates because probably the bearing stress or sometimes uh, they just call it base plate because it's at the base of the, the column okay and then there's uh, bolts here or holes for bolts and the bolts uh, is actually a and an anchor bolt okay, and it has some hooks on the other end so the term for this bolt is uh, anchor bolts or J bolts anchor bolts White bolt, sorry all right so the same goes true with this uh, for here example this is the roof truss then you can also just rest on the reinforced concrete columns okay um, another one to point out is the parts of the truss to just a review this is the top cord 
this is the bottom cord this is the king post and uh, these are the web members okay so if the materials used is uh, this can be steel or, or wood then for the columns uh, typically that's reinforced concrete or steel columns or timber columns for portal frames this can be constructed using uh, steel or timber or wood although actually it, it can also be designed using uh, it can also be designed using the reinforced concrete however it's not much common so we'll just say the uh, construction materials for this part of frames would be steel and timber okay but you'd notice that for the base for the foundations that's typically that's reinforced concrete okay so now let's move on to our next topic on still in chapter one okay so now let's have some details in the construction okay so um, I've classified the the different components of the structure such as this the roofing systems so the roofing systems includes uh, this one includes uh, let's say the roofing sheets then purlins uh, what else uh, trusses or rafters okay other parts may be present like for example the uh, purlin seat uh, the fasteners and then the barrel plates so i have it i did not include it here but the basic ones probably these are uh, these three only okay so next we have the wall systems so for the wall systems um, by the way uh, before I forget we also have roofing accessories so the flashings and then the gutter accessories for the wall systems we have like the CHP walls or the wall claddings if it's a steel steel frame structure okay so wall claddings uh, then of course uh, the gear or side rails and then another type that's common to agricultural building is the uh, curtain sided walls so basically it's just an, uh, something like a for low cost low cost construction so it's an open type but equipped with curtains so that you can roll it roll up or roll down the curtains if you need ventilations okay next we have the flooring systems so for the flooring systems we have um, solid floors Or slotted force okay the foundations the um, column footing and wall footing okay so the roofing systems we have the roofing sheets the purlins the trusses rafters and roofing accessories so if we try to look at the uh, cross section or a section of uh, roof details then these are our roofing sheets and then it's rested or, or it rests or it is supported by purlins okay and then the purlins rest on the let's say uh, 
let's say rafter. We'll just use rafters. Okay, so this is the knee hunch for the portal frame. Okay, so this is the rafter, and then this is the roofing sheets. Okay, these ones are the purlins. Okay, so how is this roofing sheet is fastened to the purlin is by the use of a roofing screw. Okay, so we have this roofing screw, and what it looks like is it's actually being drilled it's like this okay and there's a rubber on this uh, on this face okay so we have two tips for for, for this one uh, the one is it's more on a drill drill tip then the other one is a pointed tips so in order to drive this through the roofing sheet and through the purlins then you need to have adapt uh, an adapter okay so it looks like this and then this one is attached to the power drill Okay, so it is drilled, uh, and then the purlin is actually, it's not just that it's just sitting on top, but rather there's another uh, details here, like for example, the angle, angle bar, so they call this uh, angle seat or purlin seat. Early seat or angle seat or some reference they call it as cleat okay so in small construction they just use the weld uh, they just weld it okay they weld the seat purlins on this uh, angle seat and then this angle seat is welded on these rafters but for larger constructions then the bolted connections are Use. So instead of welding, they just use bolts. Okay, another one is um, there's also a bar sometimes. For example, this is uh, let's say this is a ra the rafter. Okay, and then you have these purlins. There's another bar right here. Okay, so the bar between the rafters is what we call as the sag rod okay so the goal is to take the lateral forces of the uh, of the roofing sheets so the roofing sheets are actually laid out in this manner okay and it has to lap on the sides So if we try to draw a say this view, so if this is one roofing sheet, then there must have some lap uh, lap distance. Also on the ends, okay. So we have side laps and and laps. Okay, so the value of these side and end laps are actually uh, included in our lecture handouts uh, based on the estimates book of Fajardo and I think the one is uh, Vicente Tagayo. Okay, so they have provided um, detailed discussions on these estimates, these roofing sheets, as well as the dimensions. Okay, so the most common one, common ones for the roofing, is the probably the uh, corrugated sheets. But nowadays there are also 
other profiles for the still roofing sheets so like for example the rib type or long span okay and as well as many others okay so for the roofing uh, accessories we also have okay so let's say it's a constructed constructed near the wall then we have uh, flashings and gutters what else gutters and let's say ridge roll or valley roll okay so ridge roll there it's actually a flashing on this uh, on this this part okay so the, the the goal or the role of this flashing drills or roofing accessories they're actually to to protect the structure or the building from the from water intrusions so especially the, this one the flashings so there is the specific type of flashing in this part in the ridge is called the ridge roll so the valley roll ridge is like this and the valley if you have a slope like this or you have this configuration of connection okay so here of course if this is let's say a con uh, concrete wall or CHP wall then must have some flashes right here okay so just a specific uh, term for this probably this is I don't know side flashing or whatever okay what else we also have a gutter so the gutter is actually for the drainage of rainwaters by the way another type of flashing would be on this side okay so the water goes here and then it has to go out or to be drained from the drain spout okay so when you buy these flashings or gutters or ridge walls sometimes or typical typical dimensions would be like the four feet by eight feet four feet or four feet by eight feet so meaning the maximum probably i think this is four feet maximum so if your length is uh, longer then you need to connect another set of this uh, this gutter and you connect it using rivets okay so at the end of this gutter we have um, an end end cup as well okay so please refer to our lecture handles for the other details okay so uh, i think i'm running out of time and we'll continue our discussion in the next video.